Hello biology lovers, welcome to my channel and to the amazing world of biology. I am your friendly host and today we are going to embark on an incredible journey into the mysterious world of mitochondria. Oh yeah, the powerhouse of the cell. But what's so cool about it? Let's just start with what we already know. You must be aware that cells are the structural and functional unit of life, which means that the fundamental life processes that an individual carries out are also essential for a cell to remain functional. These important functions include uptake and consumption of nutrients, respiration, transportation of food, proteins, waste materials, etc., control and coordination of various chemicals. In order to facilitate the cell in carrying out all these functions, the eukaryotic cells have multiple organelles, just like we have different body parts dedicated to different activities. In fact, the term organelles means tiny organs. The cell contains free floating organelles, namely endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi bodies, ribosomes, chloroplasts, and the topic of our discussion, mitochondria. Although it may seem like an integral part of the cell, it is not so integral after all. Rumor has it that mitochondria did not always belong to the cells. To find the answer, we'll have to rewind a bit, just a few billion years ago. Back in the early days of life on Earth, when the world was still figuring itself out, prokaryotic cells emerged. These cells originated from a blend of diverse molecules, leading to the creation of various types of prokaryotes. At that time, the earth was changing very quickly, and so did the cells that were formed. The beginning of life was a fight for survival for the prokaryotes. There was a bacteria, lost. It didn't know where it's supposed to go. One day, it happened to walk into another cell. Yes, you heard me right, inside another prokaryotic cell, as if one cell ate up the other one. On a side note, let me also tell you, this is called phagocytosis. Phagocytosis can be seen in certain unicellular organisms such as amoeba, which use this process to capture and consume food particles. It can also be observed in the immune system, where phagocytes play a crucial role in defending the body against harmful invader cells by engulfing and destroying them. Coming back to the point, in most cases of phagocytosis, the cell that has been engulfed is dead. But it so happened that the two cells found a way to live together. Don't be surprised, the world was experimenting itself. There are far more cool things that have happened since then. This synergic relationship between the two prokaryotes led to something long-lasting. Imagine a situation where one of your friends moves into your house because their parents are out of town. While you make your friend feel at home and comfortable in your room, they help you clean the room, organize your bed and sometimes even share a dessert with you. In this analogy, you symbolize the host cell while your friend represents the mitochondria. As the host cell, you provide a protected environment, all the necessary resources and a cozy home for your friend to thrive. Your friend returns the favor by helping you with your day-to-day -day activities, similar to how mitochondria and host cells rely on each other, forming an endosymbiotic relationship. Over time, the little prokaryotic cell took on the role of energy producers, became more specialized and transformed into a full-fledged organelle called the mitochondrion. They are like little energy factories, churning out the fuel that keeps our cells up and running. How so? Via cellular respiration. You might wonder what this rockety, sciencey sounding process is. Well, the fact that every teeny tiny cell in your body performs it every day tells you it's not that tricky. You eat your food and you get nutrients. You breathe air and you take up oxygen. Mitochondria convert those nutrients and oxygen into an energy form called ATP which is usable by our body. Thank you mitochondria. Voila! Now you even know why mitochondria are called the powerhouse of the cell. And guess what? The mitochondria even have their own DNA. Well, since it was actually a cell separate from our main DNA. This helps them perform various other functions in the body such as cell signaling, lipid metabolism, heat production, etc. That was one cool story. This story of the origin of mitochondria is called the endosymbiotic theory. Just like all other theories, this is a long going debate between the scientists, but till date it is the best explanation of the origin of mitochondria. Let me tell you one more interesting angle of the story if you haven't figured it out for yourself yet. This is also the story of the origination of the first eukaryotic cell. Besides the formation of a well-defined organelle, the host cell further developed to form a well-defined nucleus, other organelles and hence giving rise to a eukaryotic cell. Later on, 
The eukaryotic cell acquired another organelle in the same manner. Do you know which one? Chloroplasts. How did all that happen? Well, that story is for another time. I hope you had a blast exploring the origin of mitochondria with me. Do not forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more mind-boggling adventures in the world of science. Until then, share this video with your friends and spread the knowledge if you find the video insightful. You can always share your thoughts, suggestions for future video topics and feedback in the comment section below. Stay curious.